for this problem, let me do a few variable, uh, I guess, symbol uh, transformations here. Not transformations, but uh, symbol uh, rewriting here. Uh, instead of using n, I'm going to use f sub n. Instead of f sub s, I'm going to use big F sub fr comma s. And then instead of f sub big G, I'll say f sub little g. So this is to be consistent with my notation and how I write things on my lecture slides. So in this problem, the car is on leveled ground, so it's not going to be uh, banked. And uh, the only force that's going to be uh, providing centripetal force is static friction force. Once it starts sliding, then it goes into kinetic friction force, which is not where we're going to go. Basically, they're asking what's the maximum speed until the static friction force breaks and the car starts to skid. So first of all, we can say that centripetal force equation, and we'll just write that down because we know that this is a centripetal force problem, is mv squared over r. Um, since we know that the static friction force, the max static friction force is centripetal force, then we can say that the static force equation is going to be the centripetal force equation. So that would be mu sub s times f sub n equaling to mv squared over r. Again, we're saying that centripetal force on this side here is the uh, static friction force. Static friction force is the centripetal force. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna figure out, well, first of all, we know that this is gonna be the maximum velocity right here. So we're gonna go ahead and box this because that's what we wanna know. Uh, we know what the mass is, we know what the radius is, we know what the mu s is, but we don't know what fn is. So we're gonna do a little side quest. And um, just something that we need to know, and uh, this might be a review. Basically, for any object that is on flat ground and uh, they're not accelerating up or down, we automatically know from Newton's second law in the y direction that normal force is gonna to equal to the gravitational force acting on the car. So we'll know that the normal force is just gonna be m times g, which is the equation of gravitational force. Okay, so there's that side quest. Let's go ahead and go back to the original problem. We're gonna have mu sub s. Instead of normal force, we're gonna know it's mg. So it's mg. And we're set that equal to m v max squared over r. And again, we know it's v max because uh, we know that if it goes even faster, then the static friction force equation turns into a kinetic friction force equation. Uh, so this max static friction force of mu f sub n indicates that it's the maximum friction that's going to be had before the bond, chemical bonds break, okay? between the two surfaces. So that means uh, basically when velocity is maximized, okay? Uh, luckily for us, the masses will cancel out. So that just makes things a little easier. We're gonna go ahead and isolate V. So V max is now going to be mu sub S G R, and we'll take the square root of that. Interestingly enough, we'll see that Mass is not necessary for this problem. We see that a lot with uh, this and the banked problem. Cool, so solving this out, we see that uh, mu is 1.0. We see that G is 9.8 meters per second squared and R is 50 meters. Solve this out, V max ends up being 22.13 Five, nine meters per second. And getting it to two significant figures as shown up there, we're gonna see that V max is just gonna be 22 meters per second. And that's the final answer. So that means that um, for a car 
going in a really big circle like this. So here's the center of the circle. The radius is 50 meters. And you got a car here that's traveling in that circle. With this coefficient of static friction, the car can only go up to just a bit over 22 meters a second before it starts to skid and start going out of that circle.